Come and move that in my direction. So thankful for that. It's such a blessing. Yeah. Turn every situation into happy. Hey guys. So as you can tell from the title of this video, I am going to be giving you 10 tips that I usually tell my clients or I try and keep in mind when I am trying to reach my health and fitness goals. But 10 tips on how to stay on track with your diet, nutrition, and your exercise. So um, I'm just gonna get started. Number one, I think consistency is extremely important. Um, none of these, so all of the 10 tips I'm gonna give you, they aren't in any specific order. It's they're all equally important. Um, so consistency is key. I mean, I've heard, I'm sure you've heard that multiple times, but just staying consistent over time is going to be a lot better than going off track every single weekend or going off track five days at a time and then getting back on the getting back on the wagon. Um, consistency over time is going to be your best bet. You're not gonna lose all your progress if you mess up one day. Um, so that kind of takes me to my next um, tip, which is to think about your journey as progress, not perfection. So take progress pictures. I mean, if you wanna measure your weight every day, measure your weight every day, but make sure that you understand that it's progress is more important than being perfect every single day. Again, consistency over time is going to be the most important piece of it. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint when it comes to living a healthy and balanced lifestyle. Um, three, water intake. So a lot of people don't realize, we don't realize how important water intake is. I have clients that maybe they drink one to two glasses, eight ounce glasses of water a day, which is way too low. Water, it flushes out all the toxins in your body and it carries nutrients to your cells. So it's extremely important for just everyday functioning. And what I typically tell my clients is you need to, like if you feel tired throughout the day, first of all, look at your food intake, make sure you're eating enough. But second of all, look at your water intake. Because I guarantee you, if you were deprived of water, if you're dehydrated, it's going to drain you and you're just going to constantly feel tired and lethargic. So the first, one of the first things I always tell my clients to do is to increase their water intake. Typically they recommend between like 64 and a hundred, I would say 80 ounces for an average person. If you are extremely active or an athlete, then I would say definitely drink a little more than that, maybe 80 to hundred ounces. Uh, but they give the rule, the eight by eight rule, so like eight ounce, eight glasses of eight ounce, ounces of fluid a day. So that's a good rule to go by, especially if you're having issues hitting that water intake. Carrying a water bottle with you everywhere you go is another way that will help you reach that goal. So it's really not as difficult as people make it seem when they have to drink a lot of water, but definitely increase your water intake to help you stay on track. It'll also keep you fuller longer. So if you're drinking water, I mean, you might just be thirsty. You might not be hungry, you might just be thirsty. So drink water first, and then if you're still hungry, then you can have some food. But focus on that hydration aspect. Number four is sleep. So I have clients that and friends even that get six to seven hours of sleep a night, which seven is on the good end, six not so much. Anything less than six, you're probably pretty sleep deprived. Um, I listened to a podcast a while ago and there's so many issues with sleep deprivation that most people don't realize. And I am one of those people that needs my sleep. I get like a good seven to nine hours of sleep a night, which is typically what is recommended. If you are constantly depriving yourself of sleep, not only can it cause like long-term brain issues and cognitive functioning issues, but it can prevent any weight loss or like weight gain. I mean, depending on what your goals are, if you're not getting enough sleep, it could easily affect how much weight you're losing or how much weight you're gaining and how your body is recovering in the gym. So sleep is extremely important for staying on track. Um, micronutrients is number five. So I know I put in my last video, I talked about macros. Micronutrients are just as important as your macros. It, you can get them at veggies. If you're, if you know for a fact that you're short in a certain vitamin or minerals, then 
talk to your doctor and get a supplement for it. But make sure that you are hitting your micronutrients every day because it'll help in just normal body functioning and energy levels throughout the day. So micronutrients, just as important as macros. Um, number six is, I think it's really important because it's love what you do and love what you eat. So love what you do, choose exercise, types of exercise that you enjoy doing. If you don't like biking, why would you spend an hour on a bike every day? You're just forcing yourself to do something that you don't enjoy. If you don't like running, don't run. It's, you find, you, there's so many options out there that if you don't like something, there are a million other opportunities to find something you do like. So try different things, be creative, there's circuit style training, there's cardio acceleration, there's different types of cardio that you can do, you can lift weights. There's so many different things out there and you just have to find what works best for you and what you truly enjoy to help you stay on track. Food wise, make your food taste good. I Eating healthy does not have to be boring. I season all my meals, I make it taste good, I enjoy eating my veggies and my chicken because it honestly tastes so good to me. And if you make it appetizing, you make it look good, you make it taste good, you are much more likely to stay on track with it. Um, it kind of leads me into my next point. So planning ahead is number seven. If you find yourself rushing to make dinners or rushing to make lunch, or you're spending a ton of money during the week on eating out or getting your lunch during your work break, Plan ahead, meal prep. Do anything you need to do to stay on track that week. So if you need to take an hour or two on Sunday, plan out the times you're gonna work out. Plan out when you're gonna do your cardio. So then you have that written down or in your calendar so you know that you're gonna be doing that that day. If something random comes up and you absolutely can't, at least have some flexibility so that you can move it to another day and have a backup plan. But planning ahead, planning out your workouts and meal prepping is going to be extremely beneficial. I meal prepped this morning and it took me like an hour and a half to do everything for the next four to five days. So I typically prep my meals for all the days that I'm at work um, and then anything left over I just leave for like Friday or the weekend. But it saves so much time when I spend an hour and a half on a Sunday and literally no time throughout the week unless except for packing my meals in my bag the night before. I just set everything out and it's ready to go. It's super easy, super convenient, and it's a great way to help you stay on track. Number eight is moderation. So I don't ever tell my clients to restrict themselves on any type of food. I kind of talked about it in my last video on why I've tracked macros, but I truly think that moderation is key to staying on track. If you are tracking macros, then that's a great way to help you keep moderation in your diet because you can fit those little treats in when you want to. Um, but just in general, I mean, Restricting yourself is just gonna cause you to want to binge on that in the future. Or if you are craving a donut so bad and there's like nothing else that will satisfy you, go eat a freaking donut. Just eat a donut. If it satisfies your craving, great. If it doesn't, then you're like, okay, maybe rethink the situation and be like, maybe next time I don't need a donut, I can have this instead. But moderating yourself finding that balance so eating that 80 20 diet eating 80 percent of your diet as clean whole foods and 20 percent as treat meals or free foods that you truly enjoy um, just so you're not constantly craving all these different things but again if you go back to one of my other tips if you go back to love what you eat if you're seasoning your food and you're making it taste good then for the most part, it'll, it won't be difficult for you to stay on track. But keeping that moderation in, in mind is super important. Don't restrict yourself. If, unless you have a doctor's prescription to restrict yourself from certain foods like gluten or lactose or anything like that, there is absolutely no reason for you to restrict yourself on foods 
unless you're testing it out to see if it actually is a problem. So everything in moderation. Number nine is lose the guilt. So again, moderation, yes, but say you go overboard one night. On a Saturday night, you have one too many drinks or you have a couple too many bites and you feel overly full or you just feel super guilty about it. And that you need to lose. I, I am the first one to admit that I get those feelings all the time. I have gotten so much better at them and I am truly learning how to listen to my body and listen to my internal hunger cues to stop when I'm full and eating intuitively so I don't have to feel that guilt. I'm truly fueling my body. Um, but losing that guilt is going to be so important. Don't go into the next day if you have that one too many drinks. Don't go into the next day and feel like you have to do a shit ton of cardio. Don't. Go into the next day thinking you need to make up for everything that you ate or cut your calories or anything like that. Go into the next day the exact same way that you would normally go into that day. So don't change your calories, don't change your cardio, don't change your lifts. Don't feel like you need to make up for those extra calories. It happened, it's over with, don't feel guilty about it just move on and continue with the plan as it was set in the first place. Last but not least is number 10 and that is the support system. So I cannot tell you how important having a support system is in this industry. It is so easy. Unfortunately, sometimes people that eat healthier or they work out, sometimes it's looked down upon by other people whether it's because they aren't doing it themselves and they're subconsciously jealous of what you're doing so they don't give you the support that you need. But finding people that support you, they support your goals, whether or not they understand in the first place. I mean, sometimes they might not fully understand why you're doing something, why you choose not to drink, why you choose not to eat that pizza or that slice. Um, but it's hard to go through it on your own. You need those people on the outside that can support you and cheer you on every step of the way. You kind of got to take everything that other people say for a grain of salt um, and focus on your goals. Focus on what you want to do and what you want to get out of it and don't let other people on the outside that don't support you, don't let their comments and their judgments affect your goals and affect where you're going with your life. Stay true to your goals and find people that truly support you. If you need a coach, find a coach. I think it's so important. Again, I've posted about this on my Instagram. I am a personal trainer. I have an online coaching business. Shameless plug. If you are interested in coaching, MeganJFitness.com. Um, but I got my own coach. When I did prep, I got my own coach because I knew that I would stay more accountable. I had that support system. I had someone to ask questions to. So if you need someone to help you stay on track, a coach is a great option. They understand what you're going through. They're able to help you with not only the physical side and the nutrition side, but just the mental side as well and the behavior aspect. There's multiple different aspects that go into living a healthy and balanced lifestyle and a lot of us forget about that mental side. Those are my 10 tips to help you stay on track. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I, I know I speak really fast. I need to work on that. Um, but hopefully you got some good information out of here and they are tips that you can implement into your daily life to help you stay on track with your nutrition and diet. Uh, if you guys have any questions or are interested in coaching, make sure you comment below, email me, DM me. I am on Instagram at meganj.fit. Uh, but otherwise, subscribe, like the video, share with your friends and your family, and I will see you guys in the next video. Sunrise on the darkest day, got me feeling some kind of way. Make me want to savor every moment slowly, slowly. Fit me, tell her, may love how you put it on. Got the only kino.